Welcome, adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Barely surviving the fight in the theater, the party comes out of it with new scars, a potential new ally, and finally accomplishing a number of looming tasks that have been left unfinished for far too long. But with Hannah's death and the additional arrival of guards imminent, new problems always seem to find their way to the party. And now, on with the show. Shaft, gibbering, drooling. Now the combat is done, there's not much that you know instinctually what to do here, but Mia appears within five feet of you. And of course you all see her pop in as the theater doors, you know, the banging is still, there's voices calling from the other side, basically inquiring, like, what's going on in there? And it's... Definitely feels like someone is trying to trying to bust the door in. What did? What was that that figure that was up in the rafters? It was. Hurry, let's get out of here. We can talk about this later. It was. It was kind of like what's the word? Like, like a wraith or, or like a, a specter. No, that's not it. A, a phantom, maybe. It's sort of like a phantom. A phantom of the theater. Yes, exactly. Uh, I can tell you exactly who he was, but we need to go. What are we doing with Hannah's body? Leave it. Let's get out of here. I look if I can find a loose piece of molding on the stage and then start pulling on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happened to Allardose? What? What's the situation there? Uh, Let's talk about it later. Let's get out of uh, here. Okay. Well, what? What's our best way to get out of here? Did you get the amulet? I got it. How did you get in here? I came up from the floor. There's like a trap door thing. Shall we go that way or shall we go the way that Shaft and Fellows are I don't know how to operate it. And I, I, sent, I sent the guy. I sent him to come meet us here. I guess he's probably stuck in the crowds. Um, As you are speaking and wondering, Mia's wondering, uh, one of the seats in the front row off to the the kind of the far like if you're looking at the stage on the far right next to the aisle that kind of runs along the oval so shape stage wall. left stage left one of the theater seats actually kind of shifts over and this figure pops up from a trap door Mia the rest of you here and now that you he's down and, and like the area is, is lit right and he's in in the light. Um, he's still like cloaked and, and is now hooded again, but you see his face, um, it does have like a half mask over it. And it actually looks like his skin is still completely covered, but it, so it looks like he's wearing a balaclava with this like half mask attached over it. And he disappears down this trap door that he's opened. I will follow behind him. I will go over and, and try and uh, pry shaft from the molding that he is prying. <laughs> I, I jab my sword into the molding and start pulling harder and pushing back. We have no time. Let's Shaft, go. Shaft, come, come on. We can come back and do this later. I start waving my hammer at him like a little rattle. You know, it's got a little lightning on it. Come here. Come here, Shaft. Look. Look, you want to play with hammer? I stop for a minute. I look back at the molding. I look back at her. Come here, I let Shaft. the molding go. I sort of walk over. <laughs> hey! Okay, okay. Keep, keep moving, Mia. Stay far I enough away for, from I him. reach for the hammer. I reach for the hammer. I'm going to shackle myself to Shaft, so he's now attached to me. Oh, okay. You're going to, like, actually yep. actually use the shackle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to okay. drag him with it type thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Once I get him close enough with my, you know. Will you let me touch the hammer? Sure. I want to touch the hammer. <laughs> It's going to shock you. <laughs> will it? It will. <laughs> Make a constitution yeah. okay. saving throw. It's more like a static shock, but yeah, you do get a jolt from it. Yeah, I don't have any stats for that, but hopefully <laughs> oh, you get oh, I'm glad to do any damage before I killed me. <laughs> who, is, who, is, who is last down this uh, trapdoor? I will go down last. Bef before I go down, Kula, join us. Yeah, and he nods and uh, is right on your heels. 
Okay, so we got everybody? Yes, yes, quickly. And I kind of usher the, uh, I guess, Kula or whoever it is who's in front of me to get down so I can get down as well. So you see it actually leads to, like, a ladder. Um, it's not a staircase. It's a very narrow opening. It is literally, it is about the size of, like, one of the chairs. Very, very tight, especially for the, the larger f- members of the party. But Falzern, as you, as you are coming, you're, you know, you're, like, di- basically disappearing below the, the seat, um, where the seat would be on the, attached to the ground, right? And it starts to slide over here. Uh, slide over to, to cover the trap door up again. You hear the theater doors finally broken in and more commotion and, you know, the drawing of weapons and, and screams from some of the other theater goers. And you hear a voice say, did you hear that gibbering in here? Did you hear? So, there's an idiot in here. And then the trap door slides closed. And uh, you can get to the bottom of this ladder. I touch the hammer again. <laughs> <laughs> I picture... <laughs> Are you cooperating with me on the ladder, or am I just dangling you by my one arm off the side? <laughs> <laughs> Doing, like, bicep curls with your body weight. like. <laughs> I'd say I might slip, but I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. This ladder leads down into uh, basically another kind of a, a small, like, 10 by 10 little room where there does seem to be uh, a bit of storage here and uh, quickly into another larger wo- room um, just by a normal a normal door. Uh, it leads into what looks like uh, an area under the stage. There's a bunch of kind of dusty, forgotten props down here. And you can see, uh, as it, I mean, there's no light down here, so it is dark. So you are relying on your dark vision. But you do see, like, the, uh, the contraption, the, the stage contraption that had lowered with Mia on it, as it is closed, of course. But you see it, it basically looks, looks like the framing of, like, an elevator shaft, you know, as the platform would raise and lower in, within it. And this, this figure is kind of waving you further in as he, he's continuing to lead you through this storage area and back to uh, uh, an area that's familiar to to Mia, uh, again, through like a, a, a secret wall, like a, a false opening in a wall, into more of what looks like, a, it clearly looks like some type of living space. In here, you, you finally see where the organ music was coming from as one wall takes up the complete, completely takes up one wall of, of you know, piping that runs and seems to, just disappear into the the like concrete of the wall itself, and uh, the figure c- c- goes over to Mia, putting a hand on. You're you're fine then. You you've you've got, we've gotten everybody. This is everyone I'm in league with. Mia, who is this person? Guys, meet Jolvi. I think maybe you've heard of him. The musician. Yeah, it's Jolvi. Yes, my reputation precedes me. I am the one who watches the watchers. I am Julie of the opera. What? Julie! <laughs> hey, hey, um, Julie, I know you have friends in high places. I know you're a powerful man. Can you, uh, you got anyone to heal this guy? It's kind of driving me nuts. What afflicts him? I think he's been feeble-minded. We've seen this before. I I could heal him myself. I just, I would need rest. I'm, I'm way too weak right now. No, do not fear me, I... Can help you here as well as he like prances almost like he's, he seems very excited to be able to do this but he runs over to the organ right and starts just hammering down on it as he's kind of waving over waving shaft over to to him where he's playing right and he uh starts to play and then reaches out with one hand and well greater restoration uh shafts feeble mindness feeble mindedness away I'll uh, unhook the shackles, leaving it on shaft. I'll pull her over as I go, and I'll dance to the music okay. until my feeble mind dissipates. My arm reluctantly moves <laughs> as far as he can move it, and then when I can tell he's got his wits about him, I unhook it. I'll suddenly stop dancing. I'll look over at Jolvi. You bastard. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, a strange thank you, but you are welcome, my friend. 
Jovi, I know we're on the same side. I mean, I'll, I'll assure you guys, but maybe explain to them what you told me. Yes, I thought you had died. There were rumors. Ah, uh, you see, there is always a Julvi. I simply took up the mantle when the time presented itself. Uh, are you are you saying that there have been multiple Julvis throughout history? How familiar with Julvi are you? Fans of his work? I I I, I suppose I know a, a few songs. I, I mean. It's perhaps not not my musical taste, but but I can appreciate the the art. Certainly, from from the stories they told me, Jovi, um, he got in. Uh, these two, these boys, got into an altercation with Jovi back in the day. Uh, some wagons. Yeah, uh, you're dead. Yeah, that was a dark time in the history of my people. A history that has nearly come to an end, I'm afraid. I did not have much of a chance to speak with Mia before we needed to retrieve the rest of you. But I am in your debt, as I did notice that Hannah is no more. Yeah, I mean, that's our link. We both don't like Hannah. We're on the same side. But it, I I still worry, Jovi, about did anyone else see us? Is there anyone else in the theater that you knew of? All I could see was you. There was a lot going on. I saw no one else. No one but I know the secret ways of this place. What will happen now? Shaft, what's going to happen? First Detmer, now Hannah? Yeah, I mean, uh, who knows what the Paladins are going to do. Let's just get this uh, amulet here out of our possession. I'm thinking maybe I should tell Samuel. I fear you do not fully understand the consequences of Hannah's death, as rightful as it was. Are you talking about the power struggle here in Dracol? Something far graver. I am the last Darkling. Wait, what? No. As we no longer reside beneath the city of Dracol. I was just here six months ago. What happened? These beings... We Wait. were offered to them by Hannah. Neogi? I do not know what they are called, but... They're like eels with spider legs mm, and like... Yes, I close my eyes and I see them in our home, taking everything that was dear to me. I worked with Darklings. Oh my... I was trying... I was in Drukal, like... Jovi, we might have even met. Who knows? I mean, have we met? I have been quite fond of you for a, a, a fair bit of time, yes. It was not by coincidence that I came to your rescue. Well, apologies for forgetting a face. I've, ugh, I'm so embarrassed, but wow. I'd, my sole existence now is to rid Aspara of the Niyogi. Stick with us. You can help us. Avenge your people. My, my place is here. I draw my power from this place. I have the last remnants of my people's collections here. I, I cannot leave it. You save my life? You, you restore Shaft? Like, I feel that we're in your debt. If, if any of my people still exist anywhere... Their return, of course, would be more than payment. I cannot even ask anyone something of that magnitude. Well, I, if we stick around here much longer, uh, we're not going to be able to find any of them. So maybe you could, like, you know, get us some distance away from this place. How do we get out of here? There are tunnels that run from the Arknall, yes. They lead many places. I can take you into the sewers, but no longer inhabited by my people. They are now inhabited by these Niogi. It is treacherous down there. They're in the city already? It is my understanding that the only thing that was 
keeping them at bay was the offerings that Hannah was supplying them with. Oh, I do you... not know the full extent of their deal. Hannah has someone in my family. We need to go to the Pussycat Palace right away. I need my family member back. What What if they're going to be an offering? Yes, this this is terrible news. Oh, my goodness. You just when you think that things couldn't get worse. So you don't want you guys don't want me to tell Samuel. I can just send him a message tell right him now. What? That's, tell him that we got the amulet. The job is done. Waiting for your instruction. We got a few days before he expects it, really. I mean, maybe we hang on to it for a little bit. What is your thinking, Shaft? Hopefully we can hang on to it for a few days. I'm just worried he's going to think we never got it. We don't have to just run right to him. Let's, let's get out of here. And then let's, uh, let's take a look at it. See if it uh, maybe does something we don't, we don't know about. Uh, th- that is not time. That, there's no time for that now. Jolvi, are the paladins running more districts than Detmers? Are they in Hannah's district? These paladins, I have not seen them. They do not come to the Arknall as I, as I do not leave. But I hear the Watchers. I hear the Watchers speak about the city and their gossip. It does not seem that they had any dealings with in Hannah's district at all. Okay. I guess my idea doesn't make sense then. I was going to tell Samuel and maybe he could get his, you know, army to help us calm the chaos. There is about to be a lot of chaos. This Samuel figure, he will help with the Neogi and my people? Yes, that's his sole purpose as well. He's trying to put together some armor. This amulet is part of it, and and it's all to help defeat the Niyogi. Send them packing. They're not welcome in this world. Then perhaps the city is not as doomed as I had predicted. This family member of yours, what significance could they hold to Hannah? I have no idea. I, I couldn't... We don't even know who it is. Just, it looked like a male in my family. So maybe my dad or my brother and like... Mia, Hannah was trying to capture you as well. Right. That's why... Right. <sighs> yeah. Hannah came after me specifically. Salardos had no qualms with me. Oh, right. Salard... What do, what do we have to do to, to, to the soul? Well, it... Uh... There is no immediate urgency to deal with that. It, it oh. can wait for a while, anyway. How long of a while? It, it it does need to be dealt with within eight hours, but like I said, we, we have some time. What happens if we do not deal with it? Well, this this cage, this prison that he's kept in will no longer hold him, and we will be faced with perhaps the exact same problem we've been dealing with all this time. We'll find another vessel to occupy, and we'll have another revenant on our hands. And Alamar, what happened to him? I... I, I don't... I don't quite know. Alamar seemed to believe that he would be reunited with his body, but as you can see, that didn't happen. I almost expected him to interrupt you there. <laughs> Uh, I might kind of miss that. I do not. Well, it's... uh, I don't know what has come of him, but... Certainly if... If his values were in the right place, he could have been a very powerful ally, but... Time will tell, I suppose. Well, he's not a lich. And again, our focus is back on the Neogi, agreed? Yes. We gotta get out of here. Where do we go? Seems to be our most immediate threat. Now, I, I can... Take myself and one other of us out of here using some of my magic. It will be costly to do, but it's an option to at least get two of us to another location. And and Mia or Shaft, you could use the shackles to then travel as well. Shakara, do you have any abilities to... To teleport? No. Well, teleport, uh, I, I specifically can use a spell called Dimension Door, not to teleport, unfortunately. I, I have not learned that spell. I have no way of using 
portals or any such thing, no. Hmm. Where are we gonna go? First, first thing. We go to the inn? Or can we go try to get my family member? I, I'm in no shape to go do anything. I, I need a rest. Okay, so we're going to the inn. Jolvi, with your knowledge of these uh, tunnels and sewers, what's the best way to get to the Tickly Servant? Uh, as I s the sewers can take you anywhere in the city, but I said they are and could be dangerous. As we operated in tunnel adjacent to the sewers, but there is overlap. I can get you into the Pussycat Palace. I can take you just outside the walls of the city as well if you need to get that far. I worry the Pussycat Palace is a little premature. I'd, I agree with Shaft. We need rest. Now might be the best time to strike, as they probably do not know Hannah is gone yet. Oh, I agree. There there will be word spread quickly. And... Are we in any shape to take on another group of people? I know I'm not. We would also be risking association with her death, trying to rummage through her things while she's not there. Or seen as opportunists. Not necessarily the cause of... I don't particularly like either of those. I see both sides, Shikara, but I can barely lift my hammer. Yes, I am... I am exhausted and... and bloodied. Uh, I am not doing well. I, I don't know if today is our time to do this. Falzerin... Give me my sword. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I reach into the um, bag of holding and pull out her obsidian sword. I realized you had no choice. But next time, perhaps you drop the sword for first. Yes, I I'm I'm very sorry, Shakara. I, I, I appreciate how much of a disadvantage that put you at in that battle. It just all happened so fast. If I could all perk you up a bit with healing, would we then consider going to the Pussycat Palace? He said he could get us there. Do you want to make uh, uh, some sort of check to take a look at how oh, damaged we are? Oh, are you are? the DM now? <laughs> <laughs> I am fine, as I had to do all of my fighting from afar. You all are welcome to rest here as long as you need is your intention to pilfer that which was Hannah's as I can show you her private storeroom I spend much time there taking in the works of art that once belonged to the Darklings oh, she stole your art that sounds like a good plan yeah yeah I mean why not check it out while we're there I knew Shaft could be persuaded. Come on, Falzerin. I, uh, in, in this tone of persuasion, I cast Mass Cure Wounds. I don't even ask. So as long as the creature's willing, I guess, they'll take the healing. Falzerin objects. <laughs> All right. 27 points of healing, because I'm casting at fifth level. Oh, wow. To who? Everybody? To up to six creatures. So yeah, everybody who wants it. Come on, don't you feel better now, Falsy? We can do... I just... This is an opportune time, Shakara. You're right. Plus, Shaft, there might be some toys and trinkets in it for you. Time is not on our side on this. If we're going to do it, we must move now. Her... her apologies if you misunderstood. Her storeroom is here in the Ark now. I do not know the layout of the pussycat as well as some, but I, I can I can simply get you there. Okay, is there a way to go to the storeroom and then go to the pussycat palace? Of course. Let's go see what we've got. Yeah, well, why don't we start here? And I don't really care so much for the looting, but I know if it means you guys come along, it's fine with me. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel a little better, but I'm still not feeling great. But I'm willing to go look at some stuff. I mean, as long as nothing jumps out at us, you know, I we still got a bag of holding, right? I still have more healing as well, Shaft. 
the the other concern is is while I, I appreciate that my body is is feeling much more like itself, my mind is still tired. I can offer you uh, additional healing as well, but uh, he, he, he lo- Jolie looks at Falzer and you are correct. There's not much that can help with your mental faculties other than a good rest. If you wish to accompany me to Hannah's storeroom, let us go now then. That sounds like a plan. I mean, Hannah just bit it, right? They're going to be confused for a while. We've got a little bit, little bit of time. And can you get us to Hannah's place in the tunnels so nobody can see us go in? Y- yes. No problem, then. Let's, let's, let's heal up a little bit, find out what's in the storeroom, and then make our next move. All right. Sounds good. So, Jewel V takes you uh, again through another kind of false wall and into a um, more of a... It's like, I want to say hallway, but it's more like a crawl space. You know, like uh, that narrow in between the wall, like behind the wall and the, between an outer wall and an inner wall, you know, where there's like that gap of air um, that serves as, you know, kind of insulation. He, you know, again, a, a squeeze is that these passages aren't necessarily meant to actually be walked through normally or, or on a daily basis, right? But he, he is able to take you down a, a series of these kind of connecting little nooks eventually to to another uh, wall where he just kind of removes a, a panel that's about like two feet off the ground, like a two foot by two foot like kind of uh, wall panel. He kicks out and you have the I'll have to kind of get down and squeeze through this. And again into like there's no nothing is lit down here, right? So keep in mind it is still all your dark vision. But he, he takes you into uh, another kind of semi pretty large room, not as large as the room that would be below the stage with all the additional props and all that stuff. This place is just packed with with uh, you know canvases. Some are rolled up. Some are still in their frames. Um, there's there's busts like statues. Um, again, just uh, for, again for those that were in the Darklings uh, tunnels and had been led through there, very like this is the the same kind of stuff that was down there. It's it's just works of art, really. It's more like museum pieces. Uh, and that kind of things. In one corner, there does look like to be a, a similar contraption as to that which ha- had a section of the stage that would allow it to lower, but it's more like uh, for a single person. So it's, it would be, if it was on a map, it would be like a five by five square, but it's still that, this framework. And it, so it looks like it is like a, a, a one person kind of elevator that leads up to somewhere. In addition to the other artwork, there is one piece that is kind of, it, it stands out, it's kind of set aside, and, and it's it's less of a, of, a, of a piece, but it is a bus, but it's more like a, a display. And clearly it's got, you know, the shoulders and, and like a neck with no head where you would place an amulet. And it is situated basically right next to this elevator. Uh, and while the other items in here, uh, the majority of them do look like they have gathered quite a bit of dust, they've been neglected, unattended, this stands out as being pristine, this this little pedestal, this little podium where you where a, a necklace would, would be put upon. And it doesn't look like there are any other exits or entrances into this space. Jolvi, where does this contraption go? This leads to Hannah's private box in the theater. That makes sense, doesn't it? We looked for an opening. We were up there. I mean, I was trying to detect magic, though. This is not magical. I was watching as you did that. It did not look very thorough. No no offense, of course. We were in a bit of a hurry. I, yes, I, I do understand that now. Um, Jovi, how long has Hannah had this amulet? Do you remember? This particular piece, uh, I... Yeah. I would say no more than a month. Interesting. Hmm. About a month ago. All right. You know, uh, you know where you guys found it? Well, for a time, we had it on display in the tunnels, and it was... (sighs) I must confess, this history of my people, I am not innocent 
of the terrible things that we have done under Hannah's direction and coercion may be too strong a term as our our search and our, our, our need for such pieces as this as he motions around this storeroom. They drive our society and not being craftspeople ourselves, we are incapable of creating such fine masterpieces. Yeah, no judgment here. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Some live to tell the tale. I hope that more than we think have lived and perhaps are simply captured and enslaved like my people. And I hope that they can be returned as well, but again, under Hannah's direction, we played our part in supplying these creatures with personnel. Well, Jolvi, if you want to help us against the Neogi, I point to the circlet on my forehead. This is going to help. We might be able to get you one. You interested? I would offer any service that I could, but as I said, stepping out side of the walls of this theater leaves me at quite a disadvantage. Well, in the sewers, right? Because, do you know the Niyogi can control the mind? It's been something I've long suspected, yes. I do try to keep my distance. Okay, well, I think, I, th I don't know, I feel like you could really help protect your call in the sewers. See what the paladins could do, whip you up one of these circlets for you. If your plan is to perhaps use some of these incoming paladins to go into these sewers, I can certainly act as a guide, as draw maps for those that would go down there with arms. That would actually be great. It's a great idea. Right, guys? That is something we can tell Samuel, yes. So, what is it about this amulet, Falzerin? Can you inspect it? Certainly, I, I can take a moment to see what I can gather about it. I'll pull it out of my pouch. Look at it. Look at you. Hand it to you. Reluctantly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, because when you give him something, he never gives it back. <laughs> Okay, so if uh, if we have time, well, we're resting. You can. Yeah, I would uh, use ritual casting to use identify. See what that will tell me about it. So if it's um, a magic item or some other magic imbued object, I learn its properties, how to use it, whether it requires attunement. If there are any spells affecting the item, I learn what they are. Okay. Uh, yes, you do clear the ten minutes as you are all taking your, your short rest here, um, as it does seem to be safe and quiet at the moment. Uh, and, and yeah, the ten minutes progress, and you are you successfully identify uh, the amulet of Kalar. And obviously with your, your greater knowledge of it, there's, there's something that maybe without, like out of context you wouldn't necessarily have picked up on uh, as to there just being something more to this item. Uh, it's very clear just having those two pieces of information where the, the, what you're gleaning from your identify spell plus the kind of the bit of history that Samuel has, has given to you and that you've all discovered uh, upon your own those these bits and pieces. But it, it clearly does serve as being a, it's a piece of something more, right? It's, 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 just, it's just one part of something. But in its current form, if you were to attune to it, it does give you the ability to cast, to, to make yourself invisible and to cast greater invisibility upon yourself uh, three times a day. Greater invisibility means what? More people? No, so greater, uh, greater invisibility functions a little differently than invisibility, whereas invisibility makes you invisible for an hour, but... Uh, goes away if you make an attack or cast a spell, greater invisibility lasts for one minute and remains regardless of you attacking or casting spells. Ooh. Pretty, it's pretty good for, like, use within combat. Yes, very good. Uh, yer. Shikara don't want to give that up. 
it could be handy, except I'd need more attunement slots. <laughs> oh, story of the party's life. <laughs> <laughs> I need an item that gives me more slots, and then, right? It's like the genie in the bottle. So as as you're kind of as your original casting here, Jolvi is just again. He seems to be browsing what's here. Um, he does seem to be giving those 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 pieces that that seem to be a bit neglected. He's giving them some attention. Um, he's kind of pulled out a, a little like kerchief from one of mm -hmm. his, for his from his cloak and, and is kind of doing some light dusting. As uh, it, it does seem like like with care too, right? Like with with a fondness of these items. And it doesn't seem like it's it's uh, oh, it, like it's his fondness isn't here. for a single purse for a single item, right? Is is he's kind of bouncing around the storeroom, painting statues, you know that uh, anything really? Must you do that in here? My nose is so stuffed now. <gasps> uh, my apologies, Mia, but y yes, uh, I must. As you see, no one else is. I legitimately didn't realize that was role playing until oh. she said that. Me either. That's why I was ignoring it at first. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, no, it's that brilliant. was good. <laughs> Are there any uh, books in here? Oh, that's a good question. Why don't you, if you make me an investigation check then, if you want to kind of search around, and anyone else that would like to take a better look at some of these items can absolutely do so as well. Falzern's ears perk up at the mention of books. Are you finished with your casting? Yeah, I'm gonna cast my ca my cantrip guidance on myself for investigation because I know I'm not that smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to add a d4. Oh, I rolled a 19, but yeah, I, I would get to add a d4 to that, but it's fine. <laughs> Shakara is watching the entire time he's investigating this thing and casting his ritual. She's she's not her eyes are not coming off of this amulet. Oh. <laughs> okay, Shaf, what what are you doing? I did an investigation. I'm just looking around. I, I rolled a nine. Okay, so Shaft and Mia kind of look around. Uh, Mia, you, you do find some some books, some tomes, and they too were kind of covered in dust. You see, they're actually kind of under like a like a, a canvas covering that is over top of um, some actually other pieces of like furniture too, and, and finely crafted furniture, um, like ornate carvings, uh, like a couple chairs, right? Ornate carvings, uh, very plush. Upholstery and backing and that kind of things. Um, look, they look old, yeah. But these books, they're they're like silver embossed covers. Um, they seem to be like like plays, like like book versions of plays. And you actually do find a very old looking as you kind of you know thumb through these pages um, that are very yellowed and uh, cracked and seem pretty brittle. But you do find. What looks like the first edition printing of Love's Dissolve. <laughs> Shakara, look, Love's Dissolve. It's an older play than I realized. How does it end? Still not looking away from Falzern. <laughs> I'm gonna flip through and uh, read some of the highlights. <laughs> uh, let's just say it does not end well. For Goblin at Tanuzio. <laughs> <laughs> As it does it does end with Goblin at being dissolved within in, Uzio. In Uzio. And mm. Uzio casting Saw himself into the sea, just destroyed at what he has done. So what happens when um what is it called again? The the monster that's jelly gelatinous cube. The monster that's jelly. Oh yeah. Um, what happens when they go in water? Like, does that dissolve them or kill them? No, well, he's, he's like, you know, he's casting himself from a cliff to but the he's jagged rocks of the shore below. And as oh. he f crashes, he just sp splats. <laughs> okay, so, so Mia gets the highlights of that ending and looks over at Shikara and says, It's happily ever after. They <laughs> Oh, that is not how I thought that was going to go. I know, me either. They just decided to stay their distance but get married interesting it'd be better to be together and apart than together and then apart okay. <laughs> <laughs> think about it you'll figure it out Jaff, your uh, investigation isn't quite as thorough as mia's 
But in one corner, there actually looks like to be a, a number of carrying sacks and, again, discarded clothing, um, just mundane items. It seems like the, the tunnels were just, like, cleared out of everything that was there. And this is, like, you've seen sacks like this in the back of a wagon, uh, in a, an abandoned mm. barn, right, uh, where Neogi were coming to grab people. Uh, but you actually do do find throughout them uh, a number of gold pieces, though. Um, nothing else of, of, you know, interest, really. But you do c- combined uh, find 150 gold pieces. You know, different different denominations mixed in, of course, but no platinum. <laughs> Anything that I would recognize as being belonging to Detmer or to uh, Lag or anything that... You know, there would be Hannah's swiped from them that I might know of. Oh, okay. Why don't you give me... Um, okay, give me a history. Give me a history. 17. You actually find a... You find a, like a... What are they called? Like a gauntlet. A buckler, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, a cestus. You find a cestus. And a cestus is just something that it's like a, a a metal boxing glove, basically, is what it is. This is, and you've seen Lag use this before in his fighting pits. This is like one of the his his prized items that he brings out to show off with and showboat with, you know, and um, cater to to a crowd that is begging for that kind of stuff. And so it's very, very, very strange that it is here. What the hell is this? Interesting. What'd you find? It's just a a little trinket. It's a little boxing glove. Um, Interesting, huh? See? Huh. Do do you recognize this, Shat? Hey, I I may have seen one of these here and there before. This This one's a pretty nice one. Well, I think we could get some good gold for this first edition of Love's Dissolve. I just... Falzarin, are you finished? Uh, yeah, yes. I think I've I've learned everything that there is to to know about this. It's it's certainly a, quite a powerful amulet, even on its own. It can it can allow the the wearer to cast greater invisibility three times per day, which is quite powerful magic. Interesting. Yes. Here, would you like it back? Yes, I will be taking that back now. So I hand it to Shikara. And I put it in my pouch. Uh, 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 hmm. Remember our deal, Shikara. What? It's not for us. Exactly. I am holding it so we can give it to Samuel. Okay. So that's just one piece of this armor Samuel's going to wear. That's pretty powerful. Right. So, we're staying on Samuel's good side then, right? Exactly. I'm trying. So I want to make sure he gets it. Yes. Okay. Speaking of, perhaps you sent him that spell, that message now? I know, is everyone on the same page? I can tell him I've got it. We've got it. It is good with me. Well, now we know what it does. I just want to know what his further instructions are. You know, where to meet him, what to do. The paladins can be sure to not boot up that tower, right? I don't want any more nature destroyed. I agree. Fine by me. Yes, I, I suppose I don't have any objection. Um, I mean, we, we do still have time before we're sure that he's going to make any move, but if you'd like to do it sooner rather than later... To be honest, we get on his good side, right? We tell him we've got it and early? Come on! Yes, I just... Uh, I, I can't help... Part of me worries about one person having access to the potential that this set of armor could have. We can deal with that once the Niyogi are gone. Exactly. It's temporary. We will ensure that. You do have a point that this Niyogi is a very, very pressing threat. We either give it to him or we all fail to exist. You know, speaking of good ideas, uh, what what stuff do you got in your bag there, Falzerin? Because don't you need to check old uh, Salter, uh, Sardos in there to, you know, make him go away forever? 
Well, uh, yes, I do, but uh, again, I do have a bit of time, and yeah, but but you did mention if if we don't do it, then we have the same problem we've had right. for a long time, right. popping back, right? Uh, I I suppose I was hoping to get back to the inn and retrieve some of the things I left behind. I mean, say something goes wrong, and then uh, we can't do it within the eight hours. That would be a, another big problem. There are other bags in the corner. You can put your belongings in them. Yeah. What, what do you got in there? Dump it out. Dump it out. Let's just get this over with. Per- perhaps you have a point. Yes, uh, maybe we should finish this once and for all. We've come this far. Jovi, uh, unfortunately, as consequences being the last one of your kind, is there not a spare bag of holding lying around in the tunnels? I do not believe we had such a thing. If, if there is anything of value to us, it would be here. Yeah, I guess I just thought maybe the Darklings used them, you know, to confiscate their goods without having to carry such the load. Well, such an item is not as common as you make it out to be. Sure, sure, I... <laughs> Again, if you wish to venture into the tunnels to see if anything is no, left... No, 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 I, I trust you. Okay. You did say that there are just some, like, regular bags around Liam that I could take one of? Yeah, yeah, like a traveling bag. I, I will okay. also remind you, Bill, that while you have the soul trapped, as per the soul cage spell, you can exploit it in a number of ways. <laughs> If you wish. What does that mean? Up to six yeah, times true. before it's released. What does that or, mean? Pardon me. On the sixth time the soul is released. There's there's multiple different things you can do to it. Like so torture? you can steal life, query soul, borrow experience, or eyes of the dead. Oh. Steal life. You use a bonus action to drain vigor from the soul and regain 2d8 hit points. Query soul, you ask the soul a question, no action required, and receive a brief telepathic answer, which you can understand regardless of the language used. The soul knows only what it knew in life, but it must answer you truthfully and to the best of its ability. The answer is no more than a sentence or two and might be cryptic. Borrow experience, you can use a bonus action to bolster yourself with the soul's life experience, making your next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw with advantage. If you don't use this benefit before the start of your next turn, it is lost. And Eyes of the Dead, you can use an action to name a place the humanoid saw in life, which creates an invisible sensor somewhere in that place if it's on the plane of existence you are currently on. The sensor remains for as long as you concentrate, up to 10 minutes, as if you were concentrating on a spell, and you receive visual and auditory information from the sensor as if you were in its space using your senses. A creature that can see the sensor, such as one using sea invisibility or true sight, sees a translucent image of the tormented humanoid whose soul you caged. I think tormented humanoid perfectly sums up Sardo the Magician. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. First, stay rested. No, stay in peace. Just, just stay down, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> While you're pondering on what you may or may want to do with those effects, as you know, this whole time that Shakara, you've had this eye, your eyes trained on the necklace as, as Falzern is in um, identifying it. Thank you. Is identifying it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time that Falzern has been identifying it, right? Your, your attention has been on this amulet. But Kula's has been on you. As he hasn't said much or anything since coming down the ladder, but he is just transfixed with you. Like he just, he will not look away from you and has remained very close to you, uh, a little sheepishly. He seems, he clearly seems, I, I don't know if embarrassed is, is correct, but ashamed maybe as well, a bit of that, a bit of shame. Uh, as clearly he's well aware that he was tricked somehow, whether or not he knows the full extent of just how or what was lied to him or said to him, maybe you can fill him in if you so wish, but yeah, he's just, like, your new appearance, he just cannot get enough of of your new appearance. Okay, after I get the amulet back from Falzarin, I will notice him, like, being too close to me, and I'll slightly turn to him. Yes? I, uh, apologies. Uh, Auntie Shakara, your 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 appearance is is so striking. Uh, I 
I did not... I do not know what to say. You were taken in by the imposter. His head slumps a little bit. Yes, I... I believed I was acting on the word of Grandmother Isabella. You did not realize it was not Isabella, as I did shortly after seeing her. You must understand, with the brief interaction I had with her, him, it, and Igna's insistence, as it was Igna that had originally met with what I thought was Isabella, I did not know what to do. I was confused, and you, Igna, can be very loud. Yes, Igna. But, but as soon as I saw your your transformation, I, I knew that you could not be against the coven. As I have been saying, there is, and I'll turn towards him, something I need to tell you. Igna attacked me. I was forced to end him. I assumed as much as he did not come back to the theater. He did not meet us here like he was supposed to. I tried to inquire to the imposter, but I was brushed aside, as I often am in my position. I always thought you were the smarter one, the more worthy one. I thought I was smarter as well. I do not remain angry. I understand Igna held sway over you. I see you as someone more, more than he could ever be. He... Yeah, you can't help but notice the the uptick in his, you know, mouth, the corners of his mouth kind of... He's trying to suppress, like, a grin, like a, a childish grin, you know, <laughs> kind of like... Like, almost like it just, like, rushes over him as he tries to get compose himself. Thank you. I, I should not have allowed Igna to control me in the way that he did. I, I, I think I should report back to Grandmother Isabella and let her know of Igna's betrayal and uh, admit to her that we failed in finding the false elders and I will take whatever punishment Grandmother Isabella deems fitting. You have a way to contact her directly? No, I must return back to Heraklion. When you do, tell her our other goal has been achieved. We are on our way towards getting what we want. And you can tell her that I find you useful. I do not think you are deserving of punishment. Shall I inform her of your change? Yes. I see no harm in that. In fact, it is possible she already knows. I do not doubt that she does. Tell her it should not be long now. He nods and kind of goes back to being silent. Um, he, you know, his, <laughs> his, his gaze is a little less fixed on you, but like he's just <laughs> continuing to like steal glances. Um, kind of, you know, just taking in like your, your, your wreath of horns, right? And, and your, your hair and, you know, the color of your skin, all, just everything, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We can get a short rest in, absolutely. I'm ready with my message. Roll any of your dice, sure, yeah, yeah. You want to get your message off? So, from what I understand, April 1st last year, my notes are talking about a uh, meeting with Samuel and discussing the amulet. So it's been a whole year. <laughs> That's crazy. Whoa. <laughs> um, so it says, with a big star around it, compensation comes in many forms. So I just, I'm putting that out there before I give the the sending spell 
because in Mia's mind, we're we need some resources, we need some like revenue, we need like an injection into our healing potion income, that kind of thing. <laughs> if we're gonna start fighting these neogis, so Mia's gonna send the spell to Samuel and say, "We have the amulet. What is next? We are in Drukal. Neogi are here. Need to fight. We need compensation and help, please." And that's our show. If you're not already, be sure to follow us at Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to IncorrigibleParty.com for world lore and PC information, and we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit CriticalHitDesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio, and our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!